Thank you for tuning in to the only stations giving you double the information and inspiration, WDRB Media and WGIV, the soul of Charlotte. Hi, I'm Solomon Keys and welcome to the Master Key. We're at the Master Key. It is our purpose to give you the keys to living an abundant, passion-filled, and purposeful life. And tonight, we have a great show for you. We heard in our first inaugural show that the number one reason that a person is not living their dream, the number one reason is because of fear. Well, tonight, we have someone on the show who talks all about that. Talks all about moving from fear to courage. Moving from fear to purpose. Moving from fear to faith. A survivor's story. Mr. Matt D. Talford. But before we get started, our show sponsor tonight is Vroom VIP Up Close and Personal out of Durham, North Carolina. The best optimal experience for smooth jazz and neo soul. Treat yourself to another grand year of the fourth annual 2015 Vroom VIP Smooth Jazz and Neo Soul Expresso Series featuring extremely talented smooth jazz and neo soul musicians from locally and from across the country. That's Vroom VIP up close and personal. 919-443-2289. That's Vroom VIP up close and personal. 919-443-2289. Matt D. Tomford is a native of Long Island, New York. And is a veteran of the U.S. Army Medical Corps and retired Microsoft Technical Account Manager. At the age of 37, in the peak of physical condition and at the height of his corporate IT career, Matt seemed to have it all. A lovely wife, a high-profile career, and active involvement in the community. But over a span of about eight months, he went from playing daily tennis matches and running 12 miles a week to barely being able to climb a flight of stairs. And just weeks after his 38th birthday, he received a dreadful diagnosis that would change his life forever. From fear to faith, a survivor's story is an inspiring tale of how one man battled courageously against unfavorable odds to overcome a rare and deadly form of cancer. Ladies and gentlemen, Join me in welcoming author, Mr. Matt D. Talford. How you doing today, sir? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Thank you for having me today. Well, thanks for allowing us to come in and, and, and talk about your new book. Um, tell us, so why is this not a traditional book about cancer? Well, that's a great question. I mean, part of a lot of the stories you hear about cancer are about these people that went through these brutal, they, let, me, let me cut to the chase. A lot of them are downright sad. They're, gotcha. they're just very sad, mm -hmm. they're heart-wrenching, and I'm, some people are built for that, but I, I hate to see sad stories, uh, read about them, and I didn't want this to sound that way. So when I wrote this, I wanted to write it, and I wanted the reader to feel like they were on a journey, um, a saga. Some, some people have called this book a memoir, mm -hmm. and I, even though you could technically classify it as a memoir, I like to call it a saga, and <laughs> this, when, when 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 folks hear saga, they think roots. Uh, roots start you off with the slaves being brought over on a ship, and they take yes. you through this journey. This this book starts off in my childhood, but then it takes you on a journey. And I don't leave you in my childhood long. I, I sort of jump to different periods in my life, but they they there's a backstory that gets built, and it builds you up until this exciting drama that starts to take off around chapter six, and then it. It, you strap yourself in and you're going at rocket speed and you just <laughs> it's hard to put it down after that so it's not the traditional while well, this is you know and I don't want to knock any other author's work but a lot of the cancer stories you read and I hate to say that word I, if you look at my That's book old. I typically say C word mm -hmm. but um, I, I, I'll say cancer in third person but I'll never say it in first person I always say C word or whatever so anyway to get back to the point it, it just a lot of those stories are sad and I, I wanted the reader to walk away from this feeling good and feeling empowered Oh, all right. That's great. How can someone, uh, who can benefit from reading the book? Anybody can benefit from reading this, reading this book. Um, I've, had, I've had teenage high school kids 
read excerpts from it and say, wow, when is the book coming out? And this is when I had the, uh, this was prior to, to, to releasing it. Um, I released the, the, what we have as a teaser on my website now. And I've had, I had some high school kids read it and they were, they were drawn in. So they wanted to read it. Um, anybody can benefit from this because this isn't just a story about cancer. It's not just a story about uh, sickness. This is a story where there are principles that I applied to pull myself out of that situation. And you can take these principles and put them, you can apply them to any difficult situation you might have in life, be it finances, relationships, work, wherever you're having a challenge in your life, you can say, hey, how did this guy come from down in a very grave situation to pull himself up? The same principles apply. I got you. Got you. So what type of, um, I know you really don't want to talk about you it. You can say it. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> what kind of type of, what, what type of cancer was it? It was, um, it was a very rare type. Um, it was small bowel. It's, it's, mm. it's next uh, unheard of for someone to get a tumor in their small intestine. And it, it, it came as a surprise to me, but it, it was small intestine. Um, I had no idea I had anything going on in my small intestine. I didn't have any abdominal pain or anything like that. Uh, the only indication that there was something wrong was that I was getting tired and I was getting tired inexplicably. I thought I was maybe working too hard and it progressively got worse. It, it got to the point where I couldn't even walk up a flight of stairs without mm. stopping halfway to massage my legs because they burned. And I said, you know, this, I can't be this out of shape. What's going on? And I, I did what a lot of us do. I said, ah, I'm not going to the doctor. I'll figure this out right. on my own. And it, 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 it turned out, uh, long story short, to be uh, the reason I was getting tired was that I was leaking blood, as wow. the doctor told me. I, uh, I was bleeding in my abdomen and didn't know it. And by the time they caught it, they said that my uh, hemoglobin was half the normal number, which the normal number for a male is somewhere between 14 and a half to 16. Mine was seven. So that was, that was the indication that there was something major wrong. And they said, you know, if you were anybody else, I might send you to go get a blood transfusion. That, which is, that doctor told me that. And I said, no, I'm not taking a blood brand transfusion, man. I just played a tennis tournament last weekend. Mm. I'm seeing you Tuesday. I, I won the finals in mixed doubles on Sunday and, and was a runner-up in singles. And I did that on a half a tank. So I'm not, I'm not taking any blood, you know. So, yeah, it, it was small intestinal and it's very rare. Okay. Oh, awesome. Well, see, most people, or not most, but some people, when they hear that they have the C word mm -hmm. or they have what you have, mm -hmm. it's a death sentence. Right. So this story in this book is about coming from that place to the other place, from fear yes. to faith. Can yes. you explain it a little bit more? Yes. You know, actually, from fear to faith was the third title because ah. I, I had two other titles before that. The first title was Chronicles of a Cancer Survivor. And I didn't like that. But, I mean, if, if you look at the, the bottom part of the book, there's that's that was my original journal. So I kept that in there as an appendix as a treat for people that wanted to really feel what I felt at the time I got diagnosed. I, I, I didn't want to use that journal, mm -hmm. but when I thought about it, I said, you know what? I don't want people to see just the, the hard side of me. I want them to see my vulnerable side. And I was feeling very vulnerable when I wrote that. So that was my first title. I, I went from there to Chronicles of a C-Word Warrior. And I said, Matt, that's corny. So, <laughs> so, so I didn't do that. But I, I left it alone. I said, I'm not going to work on the title right now. I'll keep writing. And, uh, you know, uh, God spoke to me and said, you know what? It's time for people to stop having fear from, with this. And that title, From Fear to Faith, came to me. And I thought about it. That, that, was, that was my journey. And I wasn't, I wasn't necessarily afraid of dying per se, but there, there were some fears in there. And a lot of it, maybe a small percentage of it was self-imposed, but the bulk of it was people. Hey, man, you know, and just thinking about people that passed away from it yes. and thinking about people around you saying, hey, man, take care of that thing. You don't want it to progress and get worse and then you're not here anymore. And those things can cause fear. And when you when you dig down into the story, you'll see the transition. But I, I wanted I wrote that title because I wanted people to get rid of the fear part. I think half of what kills a lot of us and be it cancer or die or whatever, a lot of it is the fear you fear something and you actually bring that about. Mm. So I wanted people to read this story and say, hey, you know what? God forbid I would ever come down with something this major, but if it happens, that guy right there came through a very rare and deadly form, I can do it. So I wanted people, I think if we transition, to find a way to transition from the fear part and say, hey, you know what? This is a stepping stone in my life. Maybe that'll turn things around a little bit because the numbers right now are not good. 
every time you turn around is somebody getting diagnosed and where somebody dying from it. So I wanted to write this book to, to give people hope that, hey, you know, you don't have to fear dying. It's not a death sentence. That's wonderful. This is a great time to take a break. Thank you. When we come back, I want you to read a little bit from your book if you can. Tell us a little bit more about your story. Be happy to. All right. This is The Master Key. And I am Solomon Keys. We'll be right back. Espresso. A strong coffee prepared by forcing live steam under pressure through ground dark roast coffee beans. Introducing the Groom VIP Neo Soul and Smooth Jazz Monthly Espresso. Experience the strong, bold sounds of this unique blend of flavorful and highly talented jazz musicians from across the country once a month at the Durham Arts Council in beautiful downtown Durham, North Carolina. Come early and enjoy our exclusive pre-show Room VIP Mix and Mingle, featuring the best local caterers providing light delights. And don't forget to like us on Facebook for more information and contest giveaways. Prepare yourself for an evening of amazing jazz in this small, intimate setting. Truly a hidden gem for the Neo Soul and Smooth Jazz fan in all of us. Each time I hear a story of someone being newly diagnosed with a C word, or worse, losing their battle, my heart's tear ducts open and release a fresh set of salty droplets. I'd never paid much attention to the disease and was largely disconnected from the remote stories until one day, the scourge, as I call it, decided to take a stroll down my block. He first visited a cousin in New York. A lump in the breast, as my mother had explained it to me. Oh, I'm sorry to hear about her, was my response. If that initial response sounded somewhat empty, well, it was not due to a lack of caring. It was just that, well, this particular cousin and I weren't really that close. I loved her for who she was, my cousin, but there was a huge age difference between us, so it wasn't like we grew up playing together or anything like that. As time went on, I found myself repeating the words, sorry to hear that, more and more. Somehow though, with each utterance, those words grew deeper in meaning, and like the tendrils on a cucumber vine or a beanstalk, my words began to grow more connected to the subject of the report. I found myself saying them less in third person and more in second person. Soon, the stories became less about distant celebrities, distant relatives or friends of remote family, and more about people I knew. While I, being the guard dog that I am, the night watchman, the soldier, the Saint Bernard, as my wife so affectionately refers to me, I decided I'd rise to the occasion and help my friends and loved ones fight. Together, we'll kick this bully, the scourge, right off our block and right out of our neighborhood, or so I thought to myself. Until one day, old man scourge came knocking at my door. My name is Matt D. Talford. I am a veteran and survivor of the war on cancer. And this is my story, my personal journey through fear and uncertainty to faith and triumph. You just heard an excerpt from the book, From Fear to Faith, A Survivor's Story. You're listening to The Master Key, and I'm Solomon Keys, and we're here with the author of the book, From Fear to Faith, A Survivor's Story, Mr. Matt D. Talford. Before we went on our break, Matt, you were talking a little bit about um, you had been diagnosed with the C word and you did not want to look at it or you didn't want to give it its name. You didn't want to claim it. Mm -hmm. So tell me, how can others look at that just like you did? How can they look at what they've they've been diagnosed with the C word? How can they look at it differently? The The thing I would like for people to do is ask themselves a question, is this mine? Why has this condition, and I call it a condition because conditions are temporary, they're not permanent. So 
the first thing people have to do is I want the first thing I want people to do is to not say that they have a disease. When you say you have something, you grab it. You grab ownership of it. Your body responds to that. When when you say I'm strong, your body responds to that. I mean, how many people out there have have are runners or or they lift weights or something and they got that one last rep that they're trying to push out. The minute you open your mouth and say I can't do this, that weight drops down in your chest. Or the minute you're running and you feel like your chest is burning to that point where you can't go another step and you say, I can't, your body stops. So I want people to understand that your body responds to commands. Mm. I talk to my body like I was talking to some troops before battle every day. And so I just, I, 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 I don't, I want people to, to, to not take ownership of that. Ask yourself, why is this here? And I, I told myself, there's something I have to do with this. This isn't a permanent condition for me. This isn't something that was put on me to take me out of this world. I never believed that. So I, once, once I established that as a base, I established a belief as a base. That belief was, this is, this is not here to send me home. It's not time for me to go home. And I, and I, and I told someone else, and I hope I don't get too far away from the question, um, but I told someone else at, at another location, they, they, they asked me a similar question. I said, you know, if you want to overcome a desperate situation or one that seems to be life-threatening, you have to quote God's promises back to him. But to, to be able to quote God's promises, you got to know God's promises. And the only way to know him is to pick up the Bible and read it. And I don't, I don't say that as a holy roller or, or, or a pastor or a minister or something. That's, I don't believe that's my role. But I say that because I'm a simple person. I'm a normal person like everybody else, but I was raised to read the word. That was something mm-hmm. that we had at the house. We had to memorize scripture and quote them to get allowance before we were old enough to work. So we had to do our chores. And then on top of that, we had to memorize scripture, scripture and be able to quote it. Dad and mom would say, these are your scriptures for this week. Learn them. Um, you need to be able to recite these if you want your allowance. Yeah, you, yeah, you, 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 you get to recite them by doing your chores. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then you get your allowance by being able to recite these. So that's, that's where it started for me. But I understood by God's word that his promise was, if you honor your mother and father, your days will be long. And I said, okay, I'm 38 with this diagnosis. That's not a long time. And, and, and I said, Lord God, your promises said that if I honored my mother and father, my days will be long. Now, Lord, if you agree with me that 38 in a long time, then I know I'm, I'm not going to die from this, 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 this temporary condition. So that, that I, I feel like maybe I went, took the long way around the block to get to the house next door with answering that question. But that, that, that was what it was for me. I just didn't take ownership of it. So I, 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 I would want people to, to not take ownership. Don't, don't say I have this or, you know, and I'm sorry. I've, 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 I just, I don't know. I, I get passionate about that. So I hope I answered the question. No, I, I think you did. I think you did. I think you did. It's just, um, like you said, not to take ownership of this. Mm-hmm. But you can take ownership of other things. Yes. Take ownership of that I'm going to be healthy. That's right. That I'm going to live long. Mm-hmm. That I'm going to give my gifts and my talents to the world. That's right. That's what we're here for. The Master Key is all about that. You're sharing with us who Matt D. Talford truly is and that if you went through it, so can someone else. That's right. So it's a good time to take another break. Okay. All right. We're going to take another break. We'll come back and we're going to get to know a little bit more about Matt D. Talford. Okay. Let the people know who you are. All right. Thank you. We'll be right back. Espresso. A strong coffee prepared by forcing live steam under pressure through ground dark roast coffee beans. Introducing the Groom VIP Neo Soul and Smooth Jazz Monthly Espresso. Experience the strong, bold sounds of this unique blend of flavorful and highly talented jazz musicians from across the country once a month at the Durham Arts Council in beautiful downtown Durham, North Carolina. Come early and enjoy our exclusive pre-show Vroom VIP Mix and Mingle, featuring the best local caterers providing light delights. And don't forget to like us on Facebook for more information and contest giveaways. Prepare yourself for an evening of amazing jazz in this small, intimate setting. Truly a hidden gem for the Neo Soul and Smooth Jazz fan in all of us.
My earliest memory of the C word came circa 1978. I remember watching a television show and seeing one of the, gra- one of the characters grabbing his mid-back and being doubled over in pain. This continued through various spots in the program until later in the show, the guy went to the doctor for a checkup. The news he received was dreadful. I'm afraid you have cancer, the doctor told the man. The character went home to share the news with his family. I remember seeing all the long faces and knowing that it must have been something bad. I didn't know how I didn't know much about the C word in those days. No one in my family or anyone I'd known personally during my early years had ever had it, or at least been diagnosed with it, not as I had known or heard about. But from the mood set from that point in the program forward, I knew the C word thing was pretty bad. Now I was always inquisitive as a kid, and because of my passion for learning, I was no stranger to reference materials like dictionaries and encyclopedias. While reading was a skill I developed at a very early age, I still preferred materials that included pictures to those that didn't. I began browsing through encyclopedias searching for pictures of the C word. What was it? What did it look like? Why did the TV character have so much pain? I managed to find a few pictures of this C word and what it looked like. I remember thinking, ooh, is that what a stomach looks like when the person has cancer? I began to both hate and fear the word. I didn't even like to hear it uttered. And in those days, whenever I had the slightest pain in my back, I remembered the television show and wondered if I had the same condition that the TV character had. I remember asking one of my aunts about the C word and being told that it was something people got when they were old, and only if they smoked or drank too much over many years. Phew, was my response. In my mind, I was safe. All I've got to do is never drink alcohol or smoke and I'm good, right? Piece of cake. Or so I thought. I went on with my childhood from there, but admittedly, every time my back hurt and I wasn't sure why, even well into my teenage years, my mind went back to that TV show. You just heard an excerpt from the book, From Fear to Faith, A Survivor's Story. Welcome back to WDRB Media and WGIV, the soul of Charlotte, and those streaming live through the free tune-in radio app. You're listening to The Master Key, and I'm your host, I'm Solomon Keys. if you're just tuning in. We're sitting here with author from the fear to faith, a survivor story, Mr. Matt D. Talford. We need to see, or the people need to see you a little bit more. So tell me, who is Matt D. Talford? Who is Matt D. Talford? That's a great question. Um, and people who know me know that uh, I've never been accused of of being short with my words, so I don't know if there's enough time <laughs> to answer that question, but uh, but I'll try to tackle it. I'm, 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 I'm just a basic guy who... who I I like to laugh. I like to have a good time. I, I I like sports. I love watching sports. I love playing sports. Uh tennis is my number one sport to play right now because the tennis court is to me it mirrors life. It's a microcosm gotcha. of life. You, you you go out to play, you got a different opponent. Uh you may be playing the same opponent, but the, the conditions may be different. You may be windy one day, it may be humid. The ball never bounces the same every time you hit it. And it it teaches you a little bit of humility. Mm-hmm. So I like tennis because it, it mirrors life. If you if you want to be successful at tennis, you have to humble yourself and realize that the conditions aren't always going to be favorable for you to play in, but you still have to find a way to play and win. So, so tennis uh, has really impacted your life. It has, big time. Uh, it has. Are there any other ways that tennis has done has done that? Uh, tennis allows me to, to meet different people, too. It, it just... It, Tennis is just such it, it's such an open-ended sport. I mean, even the pros, you'll hear people like Serena Williams, even the Andre Agassiz, and some of the people retired like John McEnroe, these people, they'll all say you never stop learning that game no matter how high you get, uh, no matter how good you get, no matter how many championships you win. There's always something that you wish you had done better. So that 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 that's one of the other ways that tennis – and in, in addition to that, tennis actually helps me to stay in shape. It it – it's one of the highest calorie burning activities that anyone can do. You burn more calories in an hour of playing tennis than you will running or lifting weights. Well, that's awesome. That's awesome. So tell me, from fear to faith, a survivor story. Where can they find it? You can find the book currently in one of four places. Okay. So you can get the paperback. The paperback is currently available on Amazon. Uh, so you just go to Amazon and type in my name, Matt D. Talford. And uh, my there, there's two listings there. I won't get into that. Uh, it looks like someone maybe copied my image and decided they wanted to put up another listing. So if you see that one, it's probably going to be some monstrous amount, like two hundred something dollars. That one's not mine. 
Uh, my, my, my paperback is $16 available on Amazon. You can also get it at, through my website at www.mdtalford.com. Um, and then um, we're available digitally on the Kindle and the iBooks format. So if you got an iPhone, iPad, MacBook, uh, iMac, any of those Apple products, you can purchase it through iBooks for $9.99 or you can purchase it through Amazon Kindle for that same price. Awesome, awesome. Do you have any book signings coming up anytime soon? Um, we just had one. Um, we actually, we went to the Decatur Book Festival. It was Labor Day weekend. And then we went to the Congressional Black Caucus for the first time. So that was that was good. We don't have anything scheduled right away, but we're working on doing some book signings at some of the smaller bookstores in Charlotte and uh, in the Rock Hill area as well. So uh, stay tuned to my website for our upcoming events. Okay. So through the website, is that uh, if, if anyone wanted to contact you, how would they contact you? Through the website? They could contact me through the website. Okay. Yes. What was that website again? www.amazonmike, D is in David, Talford.com. That's my last name. www.mdtalford.com. Awesome. Awesome. So before we go, are there any words of wisdom or anything that you would like to talk about that you would like to tell others out there? Yes. Uh, I want. I would like to share with people uh, just something that's near and dear to my heart. Listen, life is hard. It is. I, I, I'd like to smile and, and, and you see me, I'm usually laughing and I'm happy. But there are times when I, I wonder, okay, what, what am I doing here? What's my purpose? And I would just like to tell anyone regardless of how hard life is, you can make it if you make up in your mind to make it. You can win at life. You you ask yourself what it is that you want to do. And I especially if there's any young people listening right now, I would tell you I spent 20 years in corporate America and uh, I retired from corporate America at the age of 40 to pursue becoming an author full time. And I would like the kids out there to know, listen, you, you, you go whether you go to college or you didn't. I, I didn't finish college. I not that's not telling anybody not to. That, that's just how circumstances of life played out. Uh, but regardless of what you decide to do, save, save, save your money. Save more of it than you're spending, because if you find that you know you don't you don't any longer like what you're doing and you want to transition to something else, having something set aside will allow you to do that. But if if you go out there, you get a big salary and you decide you want to buy the biggest house you can get, the baddest car you can get, whatever, buy all. You may find yourself 20 years down the road looking back saying, hey, you know what? I wish I had saved some more money. So if you're, if, if you're young, save your money. Save your money. <laughs> all, you got time. But that other stuff is coming. You got time. Save your money. Save your money. Well, sir, we, we truly thank you for allowing us to come in and talk to you. And you're definitely an inspiration. And and people out there, he has a great support system, Miss Joette of Talford. She is definitely his backbone and keeps him straight and and forced him. I'm not going to say forced <laughs> to, to write this book, but it's, it's an awesome book. And like I said, thank you for coming, sir. Thank you. Thank you. And if one last word I can say, uh, this sounds cliche as you hear it a lot, but if you put God first in your life, everything else will fall into place. Well, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Continue to tune in every Sunday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern. Please remember to connect with me by going to WGIVCharlotte.com. Click on WGIV Shows tab and go to the Master Key page. Also, if you want to be a guest on the show or want free advertising, call me at 704-448-3980. That's Solomon Keys at 704 704- 448-3980. I'm your host, Solomon Keys, and you've been listening to The Master Key on WDRB Media and WGIV, The Soul of Charlotte. Take care, have a good one, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>